So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about uh, profit taking and really where the best place potentially is to take profit because it's a question that a lot of traders struggle with. And um, what we wanna do is try and maximize our profits. And this uh, conversation really was kind of sparked by um, earlier this week where a trader said to me in um, our Discord group that um, he says, Leon, you have given me so much confidence to hold my trades longer. Uh, just closed the Euro Aussie with a six point uh, six and a half to one risk reward gain. And, um, you know, I replied, you know, that I'm happy to hear and, and well done. Now it's just about taking those high quality trades. And the key is to hold, you know, like um, you've been doing um, uh, if you can, you know, just a couple of these trades every month and, uh, you know, he'll rock it. Uh, quality over quantity and value over price action. Um, and then there was a, another trader who, because this was, um, you know, put in the group, um, this, this, this trade, uh, this level. And another trader said um, that he was in the same Euro Aussie trade, but chickened out and made a deep, but he made a decent three to one though. And out of all the traders uh, that are still in this trade, I guess I'm the only one. Um, and because I've learned to really kind of hold trades. Now, it can be difficult to hold trades and we, tend to want to you know take profit we look at our unrealized profit look at the fact that we're up you know you know a good two three four to one and it's easy to kind of snatch the profits but but none of us really know how far the market can go so we have to try not to approach um trading from a, an emotional standpoint as far as you know taking the money and, and run right sometimes we can actually um, leave money in the market and see how far it will go. So, you know, our, well, my entry was somewhere around here. I think maybe some other traders got, got a better risk reward, but mine was around here and I'm still in this trade now. My long-term target, yeah, is, you know, somewhere, could be anywhere down here. I'm going to let this, I'm going to let this run as, as far as potentially possible, right? And some people might say, well, how, you know, ask, be, be asking how, um, you know, how do you know where to take profit? let the market stop you out yeah maybe you can have an overall goal yeah an overall um uh goal as far as you know maybe you want to try and head down to maybe somewhere around here for some logical reasons so a logical reason may be it might be for example the yearly low it might be you know the the low from you know a couple of years ago it might be a fresh you know demand zone etc whatever the reason is have an overall target yeah where you potentially want to take um, profit as far as, you know, maybe um, way into maybe the future, maybe somewhere down here where you can go for maybe 15 to 1, 20 to 1 type trades. And then secondly, what you want to do is you want to maybe take profit and scale out along the way. So um, an example of this is um, I have a, uh, a potential um, scale out point you know, somewhere around here where I'm going to be taking at least maybe something like, you know, um, 80%, you know, 75, 80% of the trade off the market if it can get down here. And then I'm going to let 20% run for maybe as far, you know, as it can possibly, you know, go. Because I'm already up, the trade can't lose. And you know, for the whole year, let's say, for example, I could hold this trade for a year, maybe, you know, 20% of my overall position can turn into, you know, a monster trade. Who knows how far this can go? And all I have to do is do what? It's just hold. But holding can be very hard, obviously, when um, you are in a trade and you're, you know, you obviously we do want to make money. So, but holding trades gets easier if, you're already in the money and you can, you know, take maybe 80% off and let maybe 20% run. Another um, way that I, you know, um, it makes it easier in my psychology is by entering two positions and letting one run. So I have a video on that matter of fact, um, you know, uh, and it is, it's, the link is probably going to be up on the top right hand side somewhere. I'll put it on, or if not in the in the link in the description box below. But what you want to do, like I said, is enter two positions, and then when you, if you get, you know, uh, maybe something like a two to one on one of the positions, it makes it a lot easier to then hold the second trade. 
yeah, um, and let it run for you know to a logical level. Now, when it comes to choosing levels as well, I think you know why would I potentially think that prices could come down here or even further? Now, with technical analysis, what we do is we look, and especially supply and demand zones, is that I'm looking at levels that may potentially break yeah and and may not hold and why would this level potentially break is because this level's been touched several times yeah so we've got a level where it's been touched once twice already probably three four times if you want to include that so the more times an area is touched is the weaker it becomes so that has a better chance of um of of breaking through yeah and going down to maybe a fresher area of demand or supply so whenever you have an area that's been touched several times don't look at it like it's a problem area and it could reverse and it could reverse here you know it could do something like this but it has probably more of a better chance of breaking through that level if it's been touched you know once twice three times four times and I'll give an example of this as well um, on the Euro uh, Swiss trade and another trader in the group today took um, 175 pips on the uh, he says UF which is the Euro, um, uh, dollar franc uh, dollar Swiss and a 2 to 1 on a higher move up on the same currency pair and the setup was this the setup was uh, oh man. here we go sorry the setup was here now, at the time, yeah, um, you know, this is where some the trader got in somewhere around around this area here, yeah. And, and I was saying to them, I said to them, and everyone who was in the group, yeah, what you want to do is go for fair value targets, yeah, fair value targets or eight percent of the range targets, yeah. And the reason why that is is because when you get a large move, and you'll see this. And let me just uh, delete these out of the way. All right, when you get a fairly large move to, you know, and prices start and prices don't pull back, yeah, it's a fair value because at some point the market has to pull back to what is known as fair value. So from this high to this low, we don't get any pullbacks. And as we continue to go lower, yeah, prices don't pull back to that fair value. Yeah, prices continue down and lower and lower. There was no major pullback. There was no major pullback. Yeah, there was no major pullback. Here, we just keep dragging it down. So we got a setup. We got a nice demand zone around here. Prices made the high highs, higher lows, and then there was you know prices came back down into this zone on the Monday. There was an entry um, around here to get involved in the trade. So. I was saying to you know that trader, what you want to do is look for this fair value target as you know your, your, one of your first potential targets. And I explained and I broke this down simply because you don't have a pullback at some point. You know this is if if you're looking at this being a, an absolute bargain and this being a cheap area or this being you know a, an expensive area and this being a cheap area depending on which one you're buying so for me i'm looking to buy the us dollar so this area represents an absolute um bargain so at some point prices have to get go back to you know um uh, the midpoint between um you know an expensive area and a bargain area and that is known as you know the fair value target so as the dollar was bought, you know, in a potential bargain area. Going back to the target, yeah, this was an area where there was potential supply right here. And this level had been touched several times. Yeah, so this level had been touched once, twice already. So as this level had been touched, I was fairly confident that prices would break through because it had been touched already and it became weaker in the same way that in the Euro Aussie, you know, that level had been been touched several times. So we can now see, obviously, that, you know, what happened 
around here and prices have now hit that fair value target so two things whenever you want to go for extended targets look to see whether price has been touched you know at that level several times and then don't worry if you know you're under if you're if you understand that you're buying as far as fundamentally you're buying at a bargain area yeah and you want to go for extended targets like the fair value ensure that this the levels that you know any levels that are in your way potentially from reaching that target have been touched at least you know once or twice yeah and then obviously there was the take profit it took maybe about what since the 3rd of february so um about a week a week or two you know to reach that um nice nice swing trade that and uh you know well done to that trade as well for you know looking to to hold the trade as well holding is not easy it's not easy to do but like any skill yeah if you're not driven by short-term gratification and go for more long-term gratification all you need is a few of these trades every you know month or two where you can get you know your your five six eight to ones ten to ones because like i said none of us know how far prices can go and now even this first target what this trader could have done is taken 80 percent off yeah of that and then let the 20 percent run yeah, to see how far this can go because that that 20% yeah of whatever his if you you know risk 1% for example that 20% can then turn into you know an an extra uh who knows if you know what I mean the upside is is unlimited yeah so try and do that maybe this year make that be one of your goals rather than you know snatching at profits this year um and always going for maybe short term maybe two to ones one and a half to one type trades you know when you get to and i'm always an advocate of at least going for at least a two to one yeah so whenever you get you know maybe hit a two to one instead of maybe just taking profits and then looking for the next trade maybe take 80 percent 90 percent off and then let the 10 20 percent run and see what happens and then you get into the practice of holding trades because that's really what's going to end up you know growing your account you don't have to do anything because you're already up you can move your stop if you want to to break even and things like that or trail it up if you're still really scared and really you shouldn't be if you're already in the money and you already banked your profits but um and just see how far it can run you know if you're watching this um, I'd like to, you know, hear back from any of you guys that have got this far into the video um, that it, that are really going to take up the, uh, the the challenge, yeah, of you know, um, of of swing trading, and uh, just to see the effect that it has on your overall, you know, account, and um, and if you can get some of those uh, really, you know, big moves because we all want to make these, uh, you know, these large moves here, but how many of us are willing to actually hold? not many anyways guys rambled on a little bit hope you guys have a um have a great trading uh week into next week as well and um happy valentine's day for those who are celebrating it and uh take care